we will give this time to you and may God use you once more this morning to bless his children. Over to you, Mfudisi. Over to you. All right. Thank you very much. I cannot, I'm not able to, you, you're all over my screen, Brother Mbinga. I can't even see myself. Uh, <laughs> but I can see you. You look, you're looking too smart. Actually, we are wearing suits today, me and you. We are wearing I wanted, suits. Yeah, Thank I wanted much. to see myself, but it looks like I'm not going to succeed. All right. Can you see yourself now? Greetings to everyone. It's a beautiful day today. It's raining here in Tata as well. So we thank God for the showers of rain. And of course, it is also our prayer that indeed, as, as the earth soaks this water from above, that we may also uh, have his own spiritual reign and that will also grow up into the likeness of, of Christ. We've come to the end of our, of our journey. Of course, it's not the end. It's just the end of reflecting. But it, it continues, beloved. The growth that we're talking about continues throughout eternity. It will never uh, come to an end. We will continually grow into knowing who God is, into becoming uh, who God intended us to be. Uh, life will be boring if we were to come to a point where now we know nothing, uh, sorry, where there's nothing else to know, nothing else to, to research, to understand, then let's just sleep and just be eating the uh, fruit of life forever. But there's going to be this constant growth um, every day with Jesus will be sweeter than the day before because the, the day after the uh, today, we learn more about Christ. You know, the growth that we have here as Christians, is wow, I didn't know that. Wow, this is beautiful. Let me confess also, I've read the book many times. I've read the book. I've shared the book. I've encouraged people to read the book. But this week, I just reading the book, I said, well, there's nothing I'm going to find here. Really, I've read this book so many times. I've read this text, but I promise you, the book has spoken in a fresh way to me. And I said, wow, I never saw this. Wow, I didn't see how this thing comes together. And so it will always be when you study God's word. We will always discover new truths, new levels of understanding throughout eternity. So let's, let's see if we can recap. Uh, so the first five steps... Um, remember, this is not just an event. Even those five steps continue even as we grow because we, come, we, we make sins, we, we fall into sin. Then we need to go back and remember that God, God loves us. We need to fall back and remember that we need Christ. We need to um, remember that and we need to repent and sorrow and be sorrowful and, and, and see the sinfulness of sin by the help of the Holy Spirit and, and turn away from it. We need to confess. We need to consecrate ourselves. So those five steps just are up and down throughout our lives. But of course, what's important also as we, as we move is to accept by faith that God has, given, has forgiven you. And that way we talk about faith and acceptance to, to believe, don't get stuck in, 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 in struggling and, and refusing to forgive yourself when God has, has, has forgiven you. And then, of course, the life of discipleship, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which will be seen uh, in, our, in our lives. And, and so we have the inward peace and we've got the external behavior, the character that develops into the likeness of Christ. And of course, uh, the inward peace, that restfulness. And remember, beloved, when we talk about the character, we are not saying produce a character uh, that, that resembles the character of Christ so that you can be saved. We say, because you are saved. So what saves us, what brings us into the presence of God in heaven and acceptance is the character of Christ, that perfect character of Christ uh, that stands in the place of our character. When we accept him, when we are born again, he covers us with his righteousness. And of course, all that we do as we grow also needs the, the merits of the righteousness of, of Christ to be even acceptable. But we de develop that character so that we can live lives uh, of, uh, uh, that are impactful lives that are a blessing to those, to those around us. And so then now we're born again. Now we grow uh, up into Christ. We abide in Christ by faith. Uh, we preach, we witness. Oh, this is work in the life. Uh, wherever we are as, as, as businessmen and women, as, as professionals uh, in the workplace, we reflect this love of God that is pulsating in our, in our veins. And then, of course, we looked yesterday at um, the knowledge of God, um, reading the scriptures, 
understanding who God is and growing in our understanding of God. Uh, remember, if that which doesn't grow begins to die, if we don't find time to read the word of God before we realize even that which we knew will begin to doubt, even that which we had will begin to lose it. If you don't use it, you will lose it. But if we don't continue to grow, then you know what's going to happen. And then today we're looking at, uh, of course, we spoke about the privilege of prayer. Remember that quotation that, that prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Uh, not that it is necessary uh, uh, in order to make known to God what we are, but in order to enable us to receive, to receive. So when we pray, we are exercising our hands to receive. When we pray, we are not uh, forcing God to look for something to give us. When we pray, it is because the Holy Spirit is telling us that God wants to bless us. Let us let us apply. The blessings are there. Make your application because things are done in order in heaven. We don't want God to be to be accused of corruption and bribe. Uh, but there are certain things he gives us without asking, but there are certain that he will not give us unless we ask. And we ask because he wants to give us. One of the sad stories one day when we go to heaven is to discover all the things that God wanted to give you, but you did not ask. So ask and God and God will, will, will give you. And of course, today we're looking at what to do then with doubt. Uh, when we have those moments when we are not sure that God loves you, when you're not sure that you're forgiven, when you're not sure that even God exists because of the challenges that you're having, what then do we do? So we, we begin by noting there uh, on the issue of doubt that there are things in the Bible, uh, believe it or not, um, that are hard to explain. The more you read the Bible, the more you understand who God is, but the more you see things that are complicated, that are complex, that are very difficult to understand. And these sometimes the devil used to, to shake our faith, to, to, uh, to instill in us skepticism, where we begin to doubt uh, the scriptures, where we begin to doubt God's revelation. Um, and people ask, how shall I know the right way? Uh, is the Bible indeed the word of God? And some who had accepted Christ and walked with him and, and dropped that and say, no, I no longer believe in God. I no longer believe in the Bible. Um, um, I've, I'm an atheist. But there are also atheists who are known, who are bolsterous and bold, who uh, after a while he said, no, I left all of that and I'm accepting Jesus. You see what is happening? So you've got others who leave the Bible because they cannot understand what is in the Bible. <clears throat> suffering and pain, but there are others through in the same context of pain and suffering who, who, who exclaim and say, now I know that God lives. I used to be an atheist. I used to not believe in God and they accept him. So you see that um, it would appear therefore that um, everybody has an opportunity to believe or not. God never asks us to believe. He has a beautiful statement without giving us sufficient evidence upon which to base our faith. Faith, faith is, you don't say I'm, for you to trust God, for you to have faith in God, there is evidence. You don't just say, I don't know, I just, I just believe, I just, I just, God reveals himself. You've got tangible thing. Faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of the unseen. You've got evidence you can, you can touch and say, wow, look at what God has done for me. Now, it says here, um, the character of God, the truthfulness of his word are all established by testimony uh, that appeals to our reason. There's, there's reason again. And some people uh, uh, make that make faith and, and reason uh, to be enemies, that either you have faith or you have reason. If you have faith, then you have no reason. You have reason, you have no faith. But Paul says in Hebrews 11, 3, by faith we understand, by faith we can see, we can see and understand. Some of these things um, are better explained within the context of the Bible, and we understand them. We understand those even, even much more better. So there is no um, um, war between faith and, and reason. As we, as we believe, we tend to see, and the Bible says, in your light, we see light. And that testimony is abundant. And Paul says in Romans 1, all that can be known of God is there. It is clear. It's just that people suppress uh, the knowledge of God 
uh, through wickedness. Now, faith rests on evidence, not, not demonstration. It rests on, you don't have to say, I'm going to demonstrate to you that God lives. Now, I can show you, I can testify. And as we're going to do this morning, I can tell you that there are things too good that even the mind struggles to grasp because uh, of what God is to us and what he means to us. So, so, but those who, want, who wish to doubt will have the opportunity to do so. But if you desire to know the truth, if you want to uh, know the truth, there is evidence, plenty. There is evidence galore where you can rest your faith. Now you will see that sometimes we use we we use we we, we use this as an excuse uh, to live our our lives. They know, but there's this and there's that uh, because we want to enjoy sin uh, for a moment. The word of God, like the character of its divine author, uh, will present to us and in our minds, in our limited minds. Um, uh, mysteries and difficult things to comprehend. But it's not only in the word of God, beloved. Even studying the ant, there are people spend hours and hours studying ants and bees and mosquitoes. I mean, there's a guy who's a professor. His study was on the ants, on the mosquitoes. He will tell you everything about them, but still he doesn't know more. He doesn't know everything about mosquitoes. Now imagine you saying, I know everything about God. I've studied God. I know everything. If you know everything about God, then you have become God or even bigger, superior than God. We struggle to know the fleas and the cockroaches to, to, to a point where we have exhausted everything because we struggle to understand our own reasoning faculties, our own minds, our own brains, because we are using the very brain to study the brain. We've got to understand that even as we are exposed to nature and we study, we continue to study our own bodies, uh, situations around us, there will still be questions that we cannot answer. I mean, there's the virus. It keeps chasing us up and down. Um, little thing that can't even be seen. So how much more will the word of God? Apostle Peter says there are things too hard, 2 Peter 3.16, which uh, to add in the word of God, which they that are unlearned and unstable, they rest, they 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 take out out of its context, and they do so unto their own destruction. Now we cannot fully comprehend the great truths that are in the Bible. It, it, this is just to admit that our minds are finite, that our minds are sometimes inadequate to grasp the eternal, the infinite, that we have limited human knowledge, and we cannot fully exhaustively understand all the purposes of the of the omniscience that's what she says there in page 108 colossians 2 verse 3 all treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in god and to and and to all uh throughout all eternity uh we will ever be searching ever learning as i said earlier, earlier on and yet we will never exhaust the treasures of his wisdom, his goodness, and his power throughout eternity. I can't wait uh, to experience that, studying and reflecting um, forever and ever, never getting tired of discovering. So go ahead, beloved, and, and research and study, because this thing is going to be what is going to happen in heaven. You think you're going to be sleeping there in heaven, wearing the holy pajamas, forever and ever eating the tree and just sleeping and, and watching TV. No, heaven is a bustle of activity. When I talk about heaven, I mean heaven in the sense of new earth and, and a new Jerusalem. Um, I mean, studying and, and um, interacting with the angels and, and sharing our knowledge with each other and, and learning from each other. Amazing, beautiful. I, I can't wait. To, to experience that. Um, and the study of the Bible, beloved, as we said earlier on, will strengthen uh, our minds like um, that um, no study can. Now, we, we, must, we must then um, um, accept the fact that um, disguise it as they may. The real cause of doubt in most cases is the love of sin. The real cause of skepticism is the love of sin. When people are tired of of resisting sin, a tide of consecrating as an army. I just want to live my life. Um, and then they look for reasons to doubt God's love. They look for reasons to doubt God's existence. Because as Paul says, they, they deny his existence so that they can actually enjoy and, and embrace uh, wickedness. But as we draw, uh, sorry, if we have a sincere desire to know the truth and, 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 and willingness to obey it, we'll discover that as we draw near to Jesus, um, 
we will find the experience of joy and rejoicing, which we're going to talk about now in the fullness of his love. Our doubt and darkness will disappear in the light of his presence. By faith, we look to the hereafter and grasp the pledge of God for a growth of intellect. Uh, God has pledged that uh, we will grow our human faculties uh, uniting with the divine and every power of the soul being brought into direct contact with the source of light in eternity. Here we grow and experience um, the beauty of knowing who God is. And the last chapter and the last step as we, as we end our beautiful journey this week, uh, as, as, as if we had planned this, it is rejoicing. Rejoicing in the Lord. Today, as all of you know, um, Sabbath mornings, um, today, Saturday mornings, uh, we just rejoice. We just reflect. We forget about all the prayers that we're still praying that have not been answered. We forget about the husbands that have decided to leave us. We forget about the wives that have just left us. We forget about the children who don't want to listen to us. We forget about the pain. Some are in the, in the hospital even as we speak. Some will be burying their, their loved ones tomorrow. Others have just discovered that they have got cancer. Others have got friends who are going through difficulties. But today, beloved, we rejoice in the presence of the, Today, we just want to contemplate on the beautiful things God has done for us. It's important for us to do that. And that's what we are looking at. The disciples of Jesus must um, um, strategically and, and, and intentionally and deliberately reflect on the goodness of the Lord. You are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ. We are the books, letters that people must read. And what do they see? When they read us, that is 2 Corinthians 3, verses 3. Uh, if you are Christ followers, he sends you as a letter to your family, to your village, to your street, where you live. And what do people see? Sorrowful, morose, unhappy, sad, like I said, you see. But if you are a true representative of Jesus, people will be led to understand something about the goodness and will be worn to Christ and would want to serve him because they can see that this family is a family. And when the neighbors hear songs coming from the family and singing and, and children laughing and the father excited, this is something that makes people say, you know what? We also want to know the God of this person. Um, we, we tend to give the idea that as a Christian, we must gather gloom and sadness to our souls. We must murmur and complain, giving to others the wrong uh, uh, image of God and Christian life, giving the impression that God is pleased to see us unhappy, that God uh, wants to see us sad. This is a witness against our Heavenly Father. There are people who say, Christ never, never, we don't have a Bible a text that says Christ was laughed or Christ was smiling. And the Bible says he wept. So we must always be weeping. And so we walk along the path of life, dwelling upon the mistakes of others, our disappointments, how other people are not like Christ, how they are disappointing. We always worry that they are not developing into the full stature of, of, of the children of God. There's grief this side, there's discouragement this side, always under a dark cloud. Let's thank God for the bright pictures, man. Let's thank God. Even before you pray to God for your child to, to write exams, thank God that he's writing an exam. There are others who are not. Even if he doesn't make it, at least he wrote and he failed. We thank God that he wrote the exam. He wrote. That is also part of learning. Let us put together. Let us group together all the blessings that God has given us. Just this particular week, group them together, package them nicely, and that those will remind you uh, of Christ's love and look upon those continually. And the, 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 the song says, count your blessings, put them together and name them one by one. You can do that if you begin to focus. You know, sometimes it takes focus to actually see that God is amazing. We've praying, been praying with a, with a sister 
in one of the chat and he says she, she's been praying for one thing uh, that has been uh, troubling her. She says, you know what? I am praying to God to help me understand this. I'm, she's found another reason to pray for, except for this burden. The burden is still there. But he says, I want God to, I've discovered that all along I've been moving away from God. Now I've got this big challenge. I'm beginning to see that I've moved away from God. So my focus is on this. So she's also grateful, even though she's going through this, but she's learning so much. See, the problem with us, we want people to empathize with us. And I know there are people who believe that we, we need empathy. People must be in your shoes. But sometimes you just need people who are going to sympathize, suffer with you, and, and also encourage you to stand up. And also you own up where you know you've made mistakes. You don't um, just approach God as if you're approaching a sangoma and, and externalizing all your challenges. But there are beautiful things also that we can talk about. Um, God did not spare his own son. How shall he not give us freely all things? But there are people who say, no, yes, that's true. But he gives to others, to, to Pastor Papu and to so-and-so, to elder so-and-so, but not to me. God does not see me. God does not know I am here. Beloved, we all have trials. We all have griefs to bear. Temptations hard to resist. I can give you a list of the things that I, I'm also challenged with. But I'm not here to tell you of my troubles. The, uh, Ellen Joy says, do not tell your troubles, those things that are troubling you to a point where you are doubting to fellow mortals, uh, but carry everything to God in prayer. With thanksgiving, you may be perplexed in, in your business. Your prospects may grow darker. The end of the month, you have to pay those who are working uh, for you, but there's no money. The government has not paid. What are you going to do? Government owes you millions. There's this, there's the bank here, the car. Just look at what you can focus on. That is amazing that God has already done. And let your mind feast on that and praise God, even as you confront those, those issues. And remain calm and cheerful. Do not be discouraged. You know, this thing of being anxious, Somebody was saying, you know what? I've been trying not to be anxious, but God is not answering me. So I'm saying, so are you going to be anxious now? So as if you're doing God a favor. If God can help us not to be anxious, so be it. Let me not be anxious. Be like Peter. I think one of the preachers in the morning shared that with us, who was able to sleep, even though this was the night before his planned execution. The trial will not... Uh, that, that God allows and exposes us to. That's 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. Will not exceed the strength that God will give us so that we can bear it. God will give us the strength to bear the trial. They've come to repossess your house. God will give you the strength to bear that trial, to bear that trial. Maybe you don't need that house. Let them take it. God will give you a better one. Let us take up our work just where we find it, believe it, uh, beloved, uh, uh, beloved, believing that whatever may come, strength will be proportionate to the trial that will be given. And one day by the gates of heaven, uh, we will be uh, open to admit, we will, uh, the gates will be there open to admit us as God's children. And from the lips of the King of glory, the benediction will fall on their ears, on our ears, like the richest music. Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Oh, Matthew 25, 34, I long for that day. I long to hear those words from Christ. So today, beloved, we want to rejoice. And I promise you, even with the prayer warriors that I hear, they just want to hear rejoicing today. They just want to hear rejoicing. That's why we are not even going to our separate rooms to pray. We are all going to be here and rejoice in the presence of God. Even for those special prayers that people remain for, please don't remain. Um, just celebrate. If you want to remain, remain because you want to share something that you want somebody to hear what God has done for you. Let us just focus on the goodness of the Lord. Let us not focus on how bad life is around us. At least today, we've had six days of going through and fighting, but today, beloved, let our minds feast on the roses and not on the thorns. Let's pick up the thorns. Let's pick up the roses today and forget about the thorns and praise God for all that he has done for me. And I want to tell you right now, 
that I praise God for all that he means to, to me. I, I, I'm where I am because of God's grace, but I know I could be further had I been faithful all along. But where I am, beloved, I've been carried by God's grace. God has blessed me with the family. Blessed me. We may not be a perfect family, but we thank God. Had it not been for God, where would I be? Where would we be? If God was not on my side, what would have happened to me? If it was not the Lord on my side, beloved, we woke up this morning and we thank God even for that. Yes, there may be other things that we are praying for, but we right now so um, blessed and privileged to be alive. And we thank God and may God be blessed and may God be praised. He's an amazing God, amazing God. I can't tell you why. I mean, I'm looking into my life and I've lived, I've lived for more than 60 years, I promise you. I've seen my friends. I've seen people I grew up with. I can't tell how God picked me up. I can't. I can't say because I was clever, because I did this. It is just God's grace. I cannot tell. I cannot fathom God's love. He's an amazing, wonderful God that needs to be praised and we don't praise him enough. Let's rejoice today, beloved. Let's allow this light of God to shine through and to, to give us strength and courage. Let us pray together, our kind and loving Father. Thank you, Lord, for the week that was. And we come to the end of this week. We've journeyed with you, Lord, through this little book, and you've revealed truths, and you will continue to do so. We want to bask in your presence today, Lord, and rejoice because we have the God who loves us, the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, dear God, even that which you want from us, you supply it. You say, I want you to believe, and you give us belief. You say, I want you to, you, you give us that which you want from us. The Holy Spirit is there. When you say pray, it is the Holy Spirit that wakes us up in the morning and say pray. And not only say pray and give us the word to say, and not only that, but carry our prayers and make sure that they are in the language of heaven. By the time our prayers reach heaven, they are, they've uh, changed, they've been transformed so that they they can fit in that environment and thanks to the intercession of the Holy Spirit. Dear Father, dear Father, your, your love is amazing, amazing, and we thank you. Thank you on behalf of those who are here as well, dear Father. Yes, there may be sickness here, there may be pain here, there may be this there. Today, we're just focusing on your love and we bring glory to your name. You are an amazing, you are a wonderful God. We praise your name, dear Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, let everyone say amen.